Hi everyone, today I'm going to walk you through the tag historian in Ignition. And I'm going to start with one of Ignition's main IP pictures. Let's say that we have a device, which can be a PLC, MQTT, and we have successfully connected it to an Ignition server. The next step that we want to accomplish from here is to store the tag values in a SQL database. So here we connect an SQL database, which will be the place where we store the historical data. Now, before I move to the historical part, which will be the main topic that I will cover today, I will mention something that happens here before we are able to see the tag values in Ignition. For that, we use the tag groups and the tag group determine the execution rate of each and every tag. And by execution rate, I mean how often the tags pull values from the PLC, let's say, or how often uh, these tags are being updated. Now, for example, uh, if we have a, a single uh, group of tags that we want to execute on fast rate, let's say uh, every second, that will mean a one tag group, we may have a second group of tags that we want to execute on a slow rate, or we may have a third group of tags that we want to execute on a specific condition, for example, uh, a different tag. And for that sake, we are using the tag groups. So different tag groups allows us to organize the tags into groups that can have different execution rates. Now, we already all know that Ignition has a defined strategy for solving historical data, which is called the tag historian. So, when we enable historian attack in Ignition, the data is automatically being stored uh, from Ignition to the database. And the structure and uh, the format of the stored data depends on the settings we are choosing in the tag historian. And we want to store the data in a most optimized way because we want, first of all, fast access to the data, we want efficient SQL queries, and we want uh, a simple, most efficient uh, organization of the data. So choosing the right settings is a crucial step, and now, I will walk you through each and every uh, of the settings in the tag history. So first I will talk about the sample mode. Then about the dead band mode. and something called time between samples. So these are the three most important settings in the tag history. I will start with the sample mode. So the sample mode determines how often we are storing the values from ignition to the database. And uh, depending on how many tags we have, we need to be careful that we don't end up with large amounts of data in a short period of time. Here we have uh, three different modes from which you can choose. Uh, we have uh, the on change mode. We have the periodic one. And then we have the tag group. And the tag groups lead us to uh, three more uh, different modes called direct, driven, and least. So the we can choose the sample mode to be one of these five settings. It can be on change, periodic, direct, driven, or least. Now, the on-change uh, mode in most scenarios is the 
most preferred one and most used one uh, because we are storing values into the database only when the tag value has changed. And that leads us to have the raw data in the database, but nothing more, which uh, gives us a space uh, to do, for example, analysis on the data uh, or involves aggregation, filling holes, and so on and so on. Uh, later, we have the periodic one. Uh, this is a tricky one because if we are dealing with a lot of tags, uh, we may end up with large amounts of data because the periodic one works uh, on a specific execution rates. For example, if we set that to be in a second, every second for each tag, a value will be inserted into the database. Uh, then, based on the tag group, we have three additional uh, modes. We have the direct, the driven, and the least mode. And I have mentioned the tag groups uh, before, and I have mentioned that the tag groups determine the execution rate of each and every um, tag. Now, uh, we can reuse the settings and use those uh, into the sample mode, and, but uh, these tag groups in the sample mode will actually determine how often we're uh, updating the values in the database. And for that, we can have uh, three additional modes, as I have mentioned, the direct, the driven, and the least mode. The direct one uh, corresponds to the periodic one, and here also we have a specific execution rate. And then we have the driven mode. Uh, the driven mode allows us to have two different execution rates based on a condition. So if that condition is uh, true, we can have uh, one execution rate, let's say a fast execution rate every second, or if the uh, condition is false, then we are leading to another execution rate. So this allows us to have uh, different execution uh, rates, and this condition, for example, may be uh, another tag. So if that another tag uh, has its value uh, above 10, we can use uh, the first rate. And if that tag has a value uh, below 10, we can use the other uh, rate. Now, the, the list mode also gives us the possibility for two different uh, modes. Uh, for two different rates, but this is not based on a condition, but it is uh, based on uh, if the tag is being used in a client or a session. So if the tag is being used in a client or session, we can use uh, one rate, and if the tag is not being used, then we can use another rate. And let me ma mention again that uh, we can actually use and choose the sample mode as a tag group if we can see uh, a clear pattern between the tags so that we can actually group these tags into a tag group which will have different sample modes. But again, this depends uh, on the scenario and on the data that we are actually dealing with. Now, moving to the deadband mode. First, let me explain that uh, based on the deadband style, we can have uh, two different tags. We can have an analog tag or a discrete. And this depends of the type of tag. For example, if, we, if, the, if the tag has a fixed number of states, let's say true, false, zero or one, we are talking about discrete tag. And if a tag has a type of float or double, we are talking about analog, analog tag. And that will mean that uh, the tag has uh, values uh, within a range. For example, between uh, zero or one, or between one to 100. And now, uh, into the deadband mode, we can set something called a uh, historical deadband. Uh, 
And this historical uh, dead band can actually uh, be involved so that we can ignore small changes in data. For example, if we set the historical dead band to be 0 0.01 and a value, and let's say that a value has been stored into the database, the next value in the database will be stored if the value has changed more than 0 0.01. So once again, we can set a historical dead band so that we can uh, ignore small changes in the data, if that makes sense in our scenario. Now, uh, leading uh, into the next mode, which is time between samples, here we can set uh, a minimum and maximum. For example, let's say that we have chosen the on-change sample mode, uh, which again means that we are storing values in the database only when the tag value has changed. And that means that an unlimited amount of time can pass between samples. So if we want uh, to um, involve a boundary here, and let's say we set uh, the maximum to be equal to one week, that would mean that even if the value hasn't changed, we will add value every week. So the maximum time between samples will be one week. And this way uh, we are adding a limitation and uh, so that we are sure that, for example, every week we are getting a value, even if the sample mode is on change. Okay, so these are the three main uh, settings in the tag historia. And once again, we have the sample mode, we have the deadband mode, and we have time between samples. Uh, now, as I have mentioned at the beginning, uh, we want uh, to have, uh, uh, we want to store the data into the database in the format which will lead into an optimized way of keeping the data and we want fast access to the data, we want efficient SQL queries and we want uh, an official structure. For example, uh, we don't want to keep uh, all of the historical data in a single table because uh, that will lead us to um, enormous amounts of data in a short period of time. So once uh, we have figured out the settings in the tag historian, uh, I can mention uh, something called data partitioning and data pruning. So these two settings are again uh, made in Ignition and are based uh, on the database. But we can set the settings on a click in Ignition and we do not have to have uh, any kind of knowledge uh, for SQL. And the first one is data pruning. Uh, data pruning basically means how are we grouping uh, the historical data. And here a partition equals an SQL table. Now, because we are dealing with time series data, that means that we can group the data based on the time. For example, we can choose the partitions to be uh, on a yearly basis or on a daily basis, on weekly, monthly, and so on and so on. But uh, choosing the partitions is made based on how many, uh, how many uh, tags we have, uh, which uh, leads us to how uh, many amount of data we are dealing with. And for example, if we choose the partitions to be on a yearly basis, that would mean that we uh, will create a new table every year. And, uh, but if we are dealing with large amounts of data, that will mean that in a single table, we will have a lot of data and that table will be inefficient. And on the opposite side, if we choose the, this partition to be uh, daily partitions, and that would mean that a new partition will be created every day. So in a uh, 
so we will have like uh, 365 tables per year and uh, but we won't have uh, many data in a single table but for example if we want uh, to uh, select and see the raw values for three months uh, that would mean that we will need to join around uh, 90 tables and that is not so efficient because uh, SQL joint is an expensive operation. So the most preferred one is uh, a monthly per Now moving to data pruning. Uh, data pruning is basically deleting uh, data after a certain time of period. Now first, uh, at first this does not make sense because we are, keep, we are storing the historical data because we want to keep it. But let's say that uh, maybe it makes sense that we only keep uh, the raw data for the last three months and older than that, uh, we just uh, make aggregations based on the raw data. So that would mean uh, that uh, we can prune or delete the data that is being older than three months. So uh, I think that will be it for today. And thank you for your time and attention.